Here, let's talk about uh, the the second type of the Rust data analysis. So that is called neighborhood analysis, or the zonal statistic analysis. So those two type analysis that means that we are no longer compare cell by cell. So we are not care about each single cell. But however, we are we are talking about um, the cell that around each single cell. So the first neighborhood operators, normally we are looking at um, for each single cell. So for example here, for each single cell, we are looking at its neighbors. For example, for this target, 0, and it has 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0. OK, so for this target cell, we are looking at its neighbors. So you can define the neighbor as like the 3 by 3 matrix, or you can define the neighbor as 9 by 9, or whatever. And for each single cell, we are calculating its neighbors like this. And normally, we will give the new value. So in the output, OK, so in the output, we will give the new value for each for these corresponding cells that value is based on its neighbors. For example, this can be an average. So that if that is average, that will be all the values of its neighbors in this nine three by three cell. So that is one, two, three, four. So that will four divided by nine. Okay. And that will be the value of this cell. And for the other cells, we are doing the same thing. So for example, for this cell, it has uh, in this set, it has only three neighbors. So that the, the total will be one, so that is one divided by three. And for this cell, so in this three by three uh, neighbors, we only have uh, one, two, three, four, five, five cells. So that is one divided by five. Okay, so one divided by five. Okay, so those are some neighborhood operators. So for each target, we calculate um, the value of its moving windows or the, its neighbors. And the, the value can, the calculation can be average, can be maximal, can be minimized, etc. Um, and also you can define some specific type of those calculations. And those neighborhood analysis can be used for, sometimes can be used for data simplification. So for example, you can have a smoothed uh, image, or you can also enhance the uh, the difference so that you will have a more sharp edges. Okay, so those are those purposes uh, of those neighborhood analysis. So for example, here we can have a smoothing matrix. So that is um, that will be the three by three filter. So the value will be that this this value multiple one, the value multiple two, mul this value multiple, this neighbor multiple one, and also everything together will be, be uh, calculated average. And we can also have the shopping window. So that is that all the surrounding neighbors will have negative values, but the value itself will have uh, positive values. So negative one multiple the cell value, negative one multiple the cell value and also nine multiple the target and also everything sum up and we can get the user average or the sum. Okay, so those are different type of those um, uh, operators that windows that designed for smoothing and also for sharpening. Okay, uh, so let's one example. So here this time we are going to look at our air photos. Okay. Um, so our air photo has very, very um, high spatial resolution. OK. And so if, let's say, for example, if we want to smooth those edges, OK, if we want to smooth those edges, uh, let's we can say we can go to the Rust function and we can type smooth. Uh, convolution operator is pop up. And here you can see you can choose either uh, smoothing OK, you can either smooth with arthritic mean or you can use smoothing by those three by three uh, or five by five operators. OK, and let's say we want to use um, 
this air photo. And we want, let's say we just use the smooth arthritic mean. Okay. So smooth arthritic mean, and let's see how it looks like. Okay, and so this is the result. Uh, if if we compare this one to the previous one, now you can see the boundary is a, the edge is a little bit smoother than the previous one. Okay, and let's try a sharpen. Okay, mm. so we are also using the airfoot images. Uh, let's just use the sharpen. So that will exaggerate those difference amount edges. So this is the sharpen. And you can do see that as the edges, so that the difference become more obvious. OK, uh, so those are the neighborhood analysis. And similarly, we also have some zonal operators. So that is at the regional level. Um, so that is, we employ a group of cells for similar values or lacked features. Um, so it is often created by using another input feature. So for example, here uh, we have the region, so that those are zooms. So that's this is the first, the, the region one, this is the region two, and the region two, region zero. And this is the region two. This is also region one, and also this is region four. And we have the value rasters, OK? And in the output, let's say we want to calculate the minimal values for each region. So if you can see that for region 1, the minimal value will be 0, OK? So that is 0. And for region 0, the minimal value will be 0. So that is 0. And then for region 2, the minimal value is 1. So that's why we have 1. Um, and also for this region 0, the minimal value is 0, so that's why we have 0. And if we have none data, and you can see that the output is also none. Okay? And let's try example that in our uh, lecture. So let's remove those results. Uh, let's say that we want to, we have those different uh, regions. OK, and for those different regions, OK, for those different regions, we also have the distance that from that area. So from this above 500. OK, so here, let's say for what is the average distance within each region. So here we have three regions. So for within each region, so what is the average that is the average distance? OK. So let's say we well, let's search zonal statistic. OK, and here let's see the zonal raster data will be this reclassified DEM. And the field, let's say we are using value as a field because we have three type of values. The raster value will be the distance. And here we are going to calculate the average. Okay, you can see you can choose a lot of different statistics. So here, let's calculate the average. And we ignore no data. And let's create a new layer. And here we have the output. Okay, and let's change the appearance uh, to unique value. Okay. Uh, so now we can see here on this purple area, the average distance is zero. That is because that is where the source was located. Okay, so the source was here. And this green area's average distance is this one. Okay. About 3,000 meters, 3.3 thousand meters. Um, and also the third region, so the um, this one that was brown region, the zero regions, now we can see the average distance is about 5,000 meters. OK, so that is the zonal uh, operations. And our textbook also introduced the spatial interpolation. Uh, interpolation. So interpolation is based on the, the very famous 
the first law of the geography. So that was uh, introduced by Dr. Uh, Tobler. So that means that everything is related to everything else. However, the near uh, things are more related than the distant things. So for example, when we have some several points, so let's say elevation, so this is 100 and this is 200, and this is uh, 500. And we can predict uh, the uh, elevation for the other location. So for example, this point for, or this cell, so it is very close to this 100 and also 200. So probably we can give it uh, an average, so that is 100 and also 50, okay, based on the first law of geography. And if we are looking at uh, this cell, and this cell is close to 200 and also far away from 500. So probably I would project that one as 300. And also for this location, probably I will project as 400. OK, so that is a basic idea of the spatial uh, interpretation. So basically, it estimates the values of all unknown points between those known, uh, known points. and the the fundamental theory is based on the first law of geography. However, the details, uh, there are a lot of models like IDW uh, or creaking, etc. So those are very, very complicated. The details, the math that behind those models are uh, pretty complicated. So we are not going to try that one in this class. However, just let you know that uh, we do can predict values for unknown points, unknown locations based on the first law of geography.